Hey, welcome back to the 1970 Beetle and the metal work we're doing to it. Um, I'm OK Fixer. Uh, this, this is so boring. It's just so, you know, it's just tedious welding, cutting, you know, patching, stuff like that. If I run into anything really cool, uh, I'll show it with you, but I, I, I'm going to show you this <coughs> one repair of this heater channel that I'm gonna do. And then, unless I can run into something that's really cool, I'm not gonna bore you guys with it because it's, it's, it is boring, <laughs> you know? And so, uh, you know, it's, I took this piece and, and then, uh, you know, fit it in there and ground it in there give a little tappy tap got it fit in there just about right and uh, it doesn't need to be absolutely spot on rock and roll perfect but you know it'll it'll be okay and uh, I made a couple of little patches that I'm going to you know put on top there and bolster it a little more so uh, let me weld this piece in place and then um, we'll uh, show something else if I can run. If I run into anything really cool, I'll, I don't know. <laughs> to me, it's just, it's, just, it's just monotony and I don't know why you'd want to watch this. But, uh, you know, I could do a time lapse of me stitching it all up and stuff like that, but it's, yeah, okay. If I find something new, I'll show you. Here's something uh, that might interest you. <clears throat> um, inside your heater channel, of course, is your heater pipe. And mine, mine's slightly ventilated, but we'll, we can fix that. Um, the end of that pipe, it, it's not like it's a whole piece that's just stamped out. It's two different pieces, three actually. Uh, it has this end piece here. And then it has a pipe that goes through the top here and is welded in place. And the pipe was rotten, and this part was missing. And But you could see a flange here at the end of this uh, tube where it was made up of several different pieces uh, spot welded together. So what I did is I rolled a piece of steel around a socket and uh, and tack welded it, uh, and then I cut a oblong circle out that this fit into. It just it fit right into it really nice, and I made this so it was really tight in there. And I had to take and lay a bar of steel over it and hammer it down in there. And I hammered it into this piece and tack welded it here, and then I uh, tacked it onto this piece here. I'm, I'm rather proud of making that. That uh, pretty neat. Uh, and of course, I put a, a patch at the end there to seal it up so my air will go through. Now, as far as these holes, I'll be able to fix those with seam sealer. It should be a big problem because every time I touch it with a welder, it's like we're welding a beer can. It's You just can't do it. Um, I did coat the inside of it uh, with um, a base coat. I run a, a rag of base coat through it. And how I did it... Uh, was I took uh, a piece of wire and uh, just threaded it through and then I have a sock tied at the end of that and I went through it three or four times and I'm also going to go I did the front side but I'm going to go do the back side of this I had to weld do some welding I had to tack this piece on up underneath here and then there's another patch back here that I had to make uh, so I didn't want to put any I didn't want to put any base coat on because it just cook it off. Now, is when I weld this back up, is it going to cook some of that base coat off? Yeah, but it's going to give it a lot of protection also. So uh, the next thing I need to do before we put this section on, and I thought about this, it has two vents here, one here and one here, like little sill weeps, and underneath it there are holes for uh, for water to drip out. So I want to keep those, and then um, uh, so I'm going to cut this piece right here, uh, right along this edge. 
and then that way it will butt right up against against here and once we get that tacked on and and this tacked on together uh, what I need to do is I need to fit a door to make sure the door opens and closes correctly uh, which leads us to this point I can't do this piece until I fix this so I haven't decided what I want to do f with this I probably am going to just cut this piece of steel out and fold it over and weld it into there and uh, try to patch those holes the best I can with some weld. There's a big buildup of weld where they hit it really hard right here, uh, welded it together, welded the, the channel to this. And I'm sure it's part of the support of the door, so we ought to make that really good and strong. And of course, I have to have the hole for the screw and the little plastic piece that goes in there. So let's make that part and weld it in place and I'll show you when I get done. All right, I'm not completely proud of that. It needs a lot more grinding and I will, uh, but I wanna fit a door to this. And the first thing before I fit a door, I want to uh, run a tap in there. Now, if you notice what happened right there, you see the chuck slipping. If you're gonna chuck up a tap in the drill, don't chuck it up on the flukes. Chuck it up on the on the round part so it acts like a clutch. So when it hooks up, it doesn't snap off in your hinge. Well, it fits in the hole. That's gonna be a bonus. I've put a door on this just to kind of fit things and see how everything is uh, working out. And our lines are pretty good. It's slightly gappy here. Uh, the problem is, is I can't move the door back any farther because the strike, I think it's right, uh, because the striker, uh, will rub on the other striker. So I can't do that. However, the gap up front isn't the way I really want it. What I might need to do is examine this a little bit more closely and see if I can't move the striker in some. There might be a shim underneath there and that way I can move the door back. Um... By, uh, all, all you have to do is just kind of uh, pull things all back and you can shim those and it'll come back a little bit. Anyways, uh, it, the door sags also when you, when you pull it out, it drops down a little bit uh, because this whole area here flexes and it flexes because there isn't anything holding it. So I, what I want to do is I want to get a door up there and then I can see exactly how I'm going to weld this piece in and uh, while the door is up there and in place, uh, we can uh, fix that part right there and, and because that's the structural support for this. So we need, to, we need to get in there and fix that also. But got a door on it and uh, the lines seem to be pretty nice, not too bad. Um, and the gap is pretty, pretty nice. So, uh, yeah, we're coming right along. Things are working out pretty good. We're coming along pretty nice. Got this all stitched in. Uh, there's a couple of spots that I made holes and uh, can't do anything with because it's, it's like welding a beer can, uh, but it's, it's good and solid. And... Uh, should, should be fine. I like the idea that I have holes for my running board in the correct places. And uh, I'm going to tack this along the bottom and then I need to weld it to this inner structure here. Uh, and this is the end of the um, heater channel. Uh, this is the top of it right here. And I need to weld it to that. There's, there's a piece missing there, but it's not going to it's not going to matter uh, because it's all enclosed in uh, from that cap. Uh, then I have to make a patch also and bring that patch down and uh, make a little lip right here where, uh, where that goes. In order to get this lip up here uh, to uh, where I'd be able to tack that on there, I ended up having to saw off the little drain that's up in there. 
probably what I'll do is when I get done, I'll just drill a hole up in through there so it has a drain. So that way it can drain if it gets whatever in it, water or whatever. So coming right along, and more than likely when I get done with this, I'm going to, after I get everything all done, and it painted and whatnot like that, I'm probably gonna take an oil can and you know and, and squirt oil so it all runs down there and it's all dripping all out of everything, uh, probably. So, you know, just to make it protected as much as I can. But everything's coming together pretty good, good and solid, lovely. So let me do some splaining. Um, first thing, this isn't my day job. I do glass work for a living. You can you can judge me when I put the glass in the car, okay? I, that's that's fine. I, I am not a body man. I am not a welder, <laughs> okay? I don't have a very nice welder. I, my my welder is just a cheap old one twenty five. It isn't even on the bottle, so it's spattery and nasty. And yeah, okay. So you know what what am I going to do here? Well, uh, I'm going to put a patch, but I'm going to put a patch inside. So uh, you can cut your patch and you can weld a little tab on it like that. So you can snake it up through there like this, cut your patch out and that kind of thing. And I'll tack it to the top like this. And uh, then tack it to the bottom. But if you notice, the side kind of curves just slightly. And, you know, in order to take and butt weld that, you know, to butt weld that and make that absolutely perfect, you got to have a good welder. You got to be a good welder. You got to be a good body man. And I am not. So I'm going to do this the best way I know how. And I'm going to make this metal and I'm going to make it strong. And then I'm going to fill it in with fiberglass and uh, skim coat it with uh, plastic, with Bondo. My car doesn't have any plastic in it. Bullshit. <laughs> you might want to check on that, Chief. <laughs> I do a lot of body jobs too. I do a lot of do a lot of work for body shops. So uh, you might want to you might want to think twice about saying that that your car doesn't have any plastic in it because I have not yet seen a body shop job where they fixed a car where they did not put some sort of plastic in it. So. You know, how much? Yeah. Well, it's not going to be an inch thick. So, anyways, okay, that's where I'm at now. I've uh, cut a section of pipe. Here's what size it is. This is conduit. And uh, the diverter slips right over the top quite nicely. You'll be able to just glue that on there. And uh, essentially... Uh, I kind of ground the bottom of it and, and uh, swedged it in a little bit because I don't have an original end to my heater uh, channel. Uh, I have one that I made. Uh, so I'm going to stick that down there like so inside, and I'm going to weld that around there and then seal it up. And that way I don't have a piece of corrugated uh, tin foil down in there that uh, I got to fool with if it slips off or something. I did this to my other car and it really makes the defrosters work nice. All right, this is where I'm going to stop. I find this absolutely boring and it's probably a very boring subject of stitching all this all together and stuff. So, um, but I'll run over it. I got my patch in back there. Uh, right there. And then uh, got that all sewn up there. I, I blew that out right there, but we'll fix that. I got a door hung in here and uh, shimmed up, and it's it's not it's not too bad. Um, it's uh, it's got a got a little drop to it, but we can massage that. Um, it's not too bad. The uh, the lines a little it's a little tight at the bottom and a little bit at the top uh but i got the bottom shimmed up and i'm and, and yeah well like i said we'll we'll do some massaging so um i came around here and i welded that piece on there that pipe on there 
So, uh, if you look down here, if I can see down here, I don't know if you can see down there, but uh, there's the pipe and the diverter, and that slips right on there. Probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little sealant or a little bit of uh, brown 25 and uh, uh, make a make a little so it uh, you know so it doesn't vibrate and that way it won't break off the bottom but it's it's plenty strong i welded that all around there uh that's what i did to the other car it's so much better to have that pipe up there than it is to have uh, you know one of those flex pieces in my in my eye in my mind anyways when you do this, you gotta think about one side and then the other side. If you're gonna put any kind of sealant on it, you gotta make sure and have one side all welded. And then if you're gonna put any sealant on it, because the sealant will catch fire if you, you know, if you get it hot on the other side. So you have to be careful there. Anyways, this is where I'm gonna stop this. And uh, so we're coming right along and uh, I'm happy with how far we've gone. Like I said, the door needs a little bit more massaging, but that's not a problem. The opening is good because of the support I had inside. So like I said, this is really boring. Uh, what's not boring is the most beautiful day you could possibly imagine. It's about uh, oh, 60 out, 63 out, something like that. Just beautiful blue sky. Uh, yeah. Anyways. All right, thanks for being with me. Thanks for wrenching in my garage. And I'll uh, periodically uh, show you some, you know, progress on the car. Get down to something that's a little fun. Other than this, this just stitching patches on, that's not very fun. All right, see you guys later. Incidentally, I uh, poured some gasoline in our uh, gray 26 uh, sealed, um, air cleaner and no gasoline passes through so if no gas is going to pass through no oil will pass through for a while until he gets another one anyways all right see you guys later